Good morning. So today I'm in my garden and I'm looking at restoring this overgrown coppiced hazel. Uh, so I should probably start by making sure everyone knows what coppicing is. Uh, so coppicing is an ancient form of woodland management where by cutting the tree down at the correct time of year you can harvest the timber without killing the tree. The tree then puts up new shoots and additional shoots the next year, slowly becoming a larger clump like this one. Uh, now the frequency that you cut the tree depends on what you want the timber for and the type of tree this is. Now commercially with hazel it's cut about every 10 years um, so the entire thing will be cut down and all the timber harvested from it and it will be then left for another 10 years for it to regrow before it's cut again. Now you might think that puts a lot of strain on the tree and is bad for coppice trees but actually they live far longer than naturally grown trees because they're kept in a perpetual juvenile state. Uh, the only downside to coppicing is once you start you can't stop you have to continue with it because what you've done is you've taken one tree and you've now got 20 trees on the one rootstock. Okay so let's have a closer look at what's going on at the bottom here. So we have got some dead branches like this one here and that's starting to rot and that's just going to head down into the base of the tree and cause more problems. Uh, we've got the periwinkle that's growing in there that's not good so I'll pull that out. Uh, we've also got quite a bit of overcrowding and that's actually caused uh, by another problem that's happened which is somebody's cut it at the wrong height uh, previously. So with coppicing you should always cut it down at low level at some stage it's been cut up at this height and that's allowed these to grow extra branches up here so that's not only added more weight onto the top of this branch it's created more shade shading out some of the lower branches so some of the smaller ones here aren't doing so well but also it's allowed the bottom here to carry on growing and then you're suffering with overcrowding so you can see around here where they're just starting to crush each other uh, and effectively cut off the flow to one another. So if this was a commercial coppice then I would quite happily at this time of year just cut the whole lot down. So we're in the first week of January at the moment um, and that would just put new sprouts up. But this isn't a commercial coppice, this is my garden and I'm entering into the open gardens this year so I would like something to be here to show that there is a tree and that I've not just cleared it, that I'm restoring it. Um, so I had a little bit of a practice yesterday and that went okay. Um, so I started with this smaller one by the greenhouse here. So as you can see they've done the same thing to this. Uh, there's two large pieces in the middle that I want to remove. Um, but it's surrounded by smaller new shoots that I want to keep. Uh, so what I did was I started by taking the weight off the top. So from the ones that I was going to remove I took all the top branches off. So it only left me with a shorter three foot sections that I had to deal with. Uh, I then went in from the side with a chainsaw and did a plunge cut into the middle and worked my way out and I angled that to make sure the rain ran off and I removed the two larger sections from the middle. Now unfortunately when I did it I did nick a couple of the smaller bit branches around the edge which is inevitable it's a very tight cluster um, so I did have to remove a couple extra afterwards. Well there we go, and it doesn't look like a lot now, but that will bush out in the summer and it'll get all new shoots coming up from the base. Um, and I've got it back as a coppice again now, so I can keep it on a cycle and I can take out the larger ones from in here and leave the smaller ones to grow. So yeah, it's just a case of clearing all that lot now. So it looked like a lot, but now I've processed it, there doesn't seem to be anywhere near as much. <laughs> Uh, so that's the larger stuff that I'm going to be using for firewood. I've then got the long straight poles there that I can use for stakes in the garden. And then I've got a bucket of mulch to put around. Right, so... Yes, so looking at this tree, it's going to be a challenge. So you can quite clearly see there's a difference between that half of the tree and that half of the tree. Uh, so this side isn't too bad, there's a few dead branches in there and a couple of larger ones that I want to take out. But that I can quite happily leave and just work with it. 
it's majority of this side that needs to come out. Now I've got a nice cluster of small shoots here that can easily be bent out of the way to work around. I've then got this branch that comes up through there that would be nice to leave. That's a little bit more difficult. I might end up hitting that one. Um, again, this one here isn't too bad. That one there we'll have to see because where it's been squashed it does look like a nice branch I'd be happy to leave it but where it's been squashed that might be weakened so once I've removed stuff around it might end up having to go anyway but you can't stick it back on once you've cut it so I'd rather work around it see if I can leave it and change my mind afterwards and then cut it off rather than go straight in and go no I cut it off and find it would have been fine so you can see there's another cluster of thin ones at the back there so it's not too bad at the back there so it's mainly this section in the middle here that's going to go so what I'll do same as before I'll start by removing these branches from the top and just working my way down and taking the chunkier stuff out from the middle and we'll see what it looks like after that Okay, so I've reached that point where I can start making a decision about some of this stump. Uh, so in the middle here, there was a log and that's rotted away. So that, I've got a clear gap there. Um, so I'm thinking the best way to attack this is through this way. Now, unfortunately, that means I'm gonna cut this. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not too worried about that. But I've got a relatively clear gap looking there so I'm going to start cutting in here and hope that I can cut far enough in to remove this piece in the center without uh, damaging too much around it so yeah see how that goes Well, that's a big chunk out of it. And you can see here where you've got the individual branches and they're growing cl so close to each other they started to cut each other off. So they would have probably grown together but eventually it's only been taking nutrients right from the outside edge here. And then you've got other ones like this bit here where something's died and started to rot. Um, so that wouldn't help it. Uh, but strange enough up here I was struggling to remove it because it was attached there and it was attached there and actually cut through everything else that I needed to. 
So yeah, and that's what the bit that I've removed looks like. And that all moves as one. There we go, turn that into a seat. Well, they don't call it a copper stool for nothing. Okay, well that's looking better already. So now I'm going to be a little bit more selective. Uh, so I'm going to take out the ones that are dying or damaged and any that branch out excessively at the top. Uh, so yeah, let's carry on. Okay, well I think I'll leave that at that now. Uh, so you've got a lot more space between the branches there. Uh, so it's in a much better shape. And you can get new shoots come up from the base here. Uh, and they've got more light above them so they'll be able to grow up. Now there are a couple of pieces that I was thinking of removing. Which was this bit here and this bit here. Because uh, they have got damage on them. But I'm thinking I'm going to leave that for now. Um, probably cut that down next year or the year after when the uh, new shoots have come up but that's in a much better shape now so yeah let's just finish clearing this mess up <laughs> okay so it's a couple of days later because I lost the light but I've managed to clear from around the base there managed to pull the periwinkle out around there got all the branches and everything cleared and all cut up now a lot of this is just going straight for firewood because uh, that wasn't a particularly good tree um, but the new shoots should grow up straighter so it should be better uh, so i've got a small pile here of thin straight stuff that i can use for stakes and then all of this lot is going to go for firewood so yeah right that's it for this video and i shall see you later